Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Joni Young, if you're new here, and today I'm gonna to be showing you step-by-step -step how to paint Kiss the Moon. We're working on a 12 by 16 canvas that I primed once with acrylic white gesso. I let dry. I'm just gonna take some phthalo blue and directly just squeeze it right out onto the canvas. This is a good way of saving paint because we can uh, lose some paint when it's on a palette. And this is just for the background so it doesn't really matter. I'm just kind of having fun with my paint. I've also got a little bit of ultramarine or cobalt blue there that I added on the bottom. I'm gonna just swirl and blend the two together all over the canvas and it doesn't matter how you do it you can do this in any direction you want just have fun with creating your background and then we're going to come in with a toothbrush that I like to use for creating stars and snow and sparkles in a painting I'm using a number 50 filbert brush just for blending but you can use any large brush that you have or that you want to create your background with So with a toothbrush here, get it really wet and scrub it right into that titanium white. Get it evenly coated on the bottom and then just flick a few times all over, changing the direction of your brush so it's more random and sporadic looking. Then what I'm going to do is just take my pinky and dab a few areas to create some more of a soft glow to some of these stars up in the sky. Now just a few, we don't have to do every single one. All right, it's time to start coming in with a moon. And the way I'm gonna approach this moon is by using a small filbert brush. And I'm gonna just gently scrub off of that blue paint that's still a little bit wet. And I'm gonna rinse my brush off and dry it off each time I do this. This gives you such a natural bright glow to moons as well as creating stars. So keep this in mind. If you guys are having trouble getting that paint off and it's too dry then just come right over top with some titanium white um, you'll get almost the same effect but this is really fun and this is a really uh, awesome painting hack and tip that I want to share with you guys from time to time in my tutorials so keep in mind that I don't want it to be the same brightness or color all over because we want to be able to see those shadows and uh uh, craters on the moon so some of your areas will be left a little bit light blue or even a little bit dark blue if you have trouble achieving this then just come back in later on with a darker color and it doesn't have to be too dark a, just a couple shades darker than the white is all you need to create that so now I'm just gonna add a few little light areas here casting down from that moon I'm just gonna scumble all over this is sort of a dry brush and it is a little bit too dry, so I'm going to go back in with a couple sizes larger of a filbert brush. It's damp, and I'm just going to scumble and turn my brush in different directions all over, giving this a really soft, glowy, um, somewhat hazy, cloudy effect, but nothing too uh, detailed. I just want to create a soft, lighted area or lit area here. Just going to scumble out the remainder of white in my brush onto some of those stars uh, just for fun casting a little bit of extra light in a few other areas now I've got a little round brush that I'm using you can use any tiny brush that you want I'm showing you guys how to make this is just one color recipe for skin I've got phthalo blue neon orange turquoise and white and you'll see by adding a little bit more of the orange in with that you can get a really natural skin color so I'm going to use this to start painting the figure, her arms. We're going to see a little bit of her back, and that's about it. We're not going to uh, see her legs, her feet, or her face. 
Uh, but you could add a little bit more if you wanted to make this your own and by all means um, paint some legs if you want. You could have uh, her legs more in silhouette through her dress. Um, I did that with another tutorial of a uh, female in a red dress. And if you guys haven't seen that, I've got a, quite a few. Um, I've got quite a collection that I've been building up here for figures and a few portraits. So I'll be sure to leave the link uh, below, or links. I don't have a playlist yet, but I should. Um, so I'm just adding the arms very loosely, impressionistically, not out to create a photo, uh, photo type of a look here or realistic. I want this to be really dreamy, whimsical, and fantasy-like, and have just like a fun, uh, dreamy feel to it. So I want it to feel like she's holding the mood and reaching out and kissing it goodnight. So I've got her hugging the moon. I'm going to come in and balance out um, her arm, her elbow a little bit more, but I'm not going to spend too, too much time trying to make everything look super realistic like a photo. And I'll be adding uh, some more highlights on her arms as the painting progresses. You can see I added a little bit of hair, taking a bit of blue and black. And I'm going to just add in some skin color there right on her back. And then it scoops down with her dress. And I was thinking here of adding a little bit of a profile, but then I decided to change that. I, uh, as you can see in the, the finished um, picture of the painting, the, there's no profile there. She's kind of got her head tilted upwards and looks like she's kissing the moon. Um, I really want to have this dress sort of free flowing and kind of blending into the sky. I want to add uh, my flair of fantasy waterfalls that I like to do. I'm going to add a little uh, castle up in the top right. And all I'm doing here is just evening out those lines, adding a little bit more white where I want, and uh, maybe stretching out her hands a little bit more. I've got a little bit of neon orange, more neon orange with my white for these brightest highlights on her arm. So this makes sense to have this really bright because that glow from the moon would be, would be hitting and casting down on her arms like that. So I've got some black now. And I'm mixing it in with my other colors there just so that it's uh, sort of tinted. And you can just use straight black if you want, or you can use any color that you want um, for the hair. And I'm just going to make it really long and flowy and have just a lot of curve and flow to it and have fun and make it really dramatic and exaggerate it because I think it just goes along with this painting. So I'll be building this up and making it a little bit thicker and longer and flowier as the painting progresses. Now with a small filbert brush, well that's what I'm using, but you guys can use any small brush that you want. I'm gonna take a bit of white and turquoise, more white than the turquoise, and I'm gonna begin the dress. So I'm just gonna simply start pulling the side just see a little bit of the side of her dress where it's gonna be really really bright from that uh, glow from the moon and maybe some stars around that side and we're just gonna start building this up a few little pulls and brush strokes keeping it flowy and loose and then I'm gonna be scumbling around a lot sometimes taking off a little bit of that paint and then sometimes coming in with a few other colors we're going to be doing little dabs and little uh, star kind of um, orbs and glowy little circle type of things. So you can use your finger to soften, you can use the brush to scumble around. And then it, the idea is just to have some really beautiful uh, lights glowing, maybe fireflies or stars in all different colors. Uh, and this is where you can really play it up and have as much fun with color as you want or keep it simple. and. Um, just use one or two colors or even just one um, so it's really fun you really can't go wrong with whatever colors you decide to go with for her dress it's just going to be so magical and pretty in the end so I'm just starting to tint the white a little bit I want to add a little bit of a glow around her hair but it's still really wet so sometimes I accidentally pick up a little bit of black now you'll notice when I do that because I have to go back in and um, correct that 
Uh, so I don't want it to look like her hair is attached to the moon. So right above between the moon and her hair, you can see there's kind of a bit of a white line and I'm going to be fixing that a little bit later. But I'm just going to keep smushing and traveling around with my brush, kind of just smushing, pushing and scumbling. Uh, not perfect circles or anything and just out to create the the feel of this dress a little bit more and the flow that I want and then I'll do a little bit more detail with um, the dots and the colors and the dabs that I want for these little stars and lights. Okay, so the first color that I'm going to use is turquoise. I'll use turquoise, sometimes more turquoise, sometimes I'll uh, tint my white with it and make softer uh, shades out of it. And I'll just start adding these little stars all around. You could use your toothbrush again for this if you want, but I, I kind of just want to have these stand out and look different and separate from the other ones in the background. I'm going to be using a few other colors today. Uh, I've got Holbein Neon Luminous Acrylics. I'll leave that in the description list below for all the colors and brushes that I'm using. So just click the bottom of the video and the description area should pop up. I'm going to be using um, this turquoise to go over some of these stars that are now dry. So this is going to give them a really pretty turquoisey minty glow to some of them. And some of the other colors that I'm going to be using today are neon orange. Well, I've got neon orange already on my palette. We use that for the skin, of course. I'm going to be incorporating some of my neon yellow warm. Uh, I've got neon pink. And I've also got uh, my luminous neon rose, which is really, really beautiful. And it goes over um, the blue so beautifully and it'll create, you'll, you'll be left with a really pretty purpley shade. Um, and it's kind of like an electric color. It's just just really pops off the canvas and it's gorgeous for fantasy like paintings. Okay, I'm gonna start adding some more highlights. I'm gonna start on the arms here and it's just that really light skin color. Then I'm gonna come right in here and outline her dress where it scoops down and I'm going to start adding some more colors here to her dress after I add these little dots so for the next set of lights on her dress I'm going to take my round brush and I'm going to take my neon yellow warm with my titanium white and this is going to give us a really really nice bright warm twinkly star effect so we'll add these all over wherever you want on the dress all around and the bottom and you can have them kind of going out from her dress um, kind of off into the sky as well that also looks really pretty I'm going to add a little bit of neon orange to that yellow without washing my brush off. Kind of just gently go around, carefully go around some of those light yellow ones that I made. And I'm going to start to add more color a little bit at a time here. I, I won't do that to every single one. I'm just going to do it to a few. And then I'm going to come back in and really brighten these stars or these lights with uh, just a dot of the titanium white. I'm going to add another highlight with this golden yellow and white to her arms. This is where I accidentally pick up a little bit of the black from her hair. So I'm just going to come in here and gently push that off, wipe the excess off on a towel, do that again. And then I might have to come back in with a bit of white after. just to clean up that edge again. I'm 
I'm gonna just add a few more of these neon orange and white stars and lights and then I'm gonna wash my brush off and go right into that beautiful luminous rose now keep in mind if you don't have uh, these neon colors don't worry you can still make your lights really pretty just use any pastel color you have or uh, any color mixed with a bit of white and you'll get a really pretty soft pastel color so like I said I really like this color over top as a filter with the blue background it looks really pretty and I might even take well I'm definitely going to be taking my uh, luminous rose with my blue and mixing that together to create a really pretty purple color that you'll see a little bit later on so I'm applying this color this rose with the white in between those lights adding this glowing pretty purpley color in between throughout the dress and kind of sporadically in little areas here I'm going to start to exaggerate this and I'm eventually going to come in here with some pretty little fairy like or butterflies um, little fairies or butterflies off to the left side and here you can see this gorgeous color that I made with phthalo blue luminous rose and white it's almost a light blue violet but it's more um, leaning towards uh, purpley lilac -y color which is really really pretty so you can change that up as much as you want by adding a little bit more blue or a little bit more of the of the luminous rose so I'm just going to add that color all these colors a little bit of each one throughout the dress and slightly around either side of her dress I'll add little hints of all these colors as well to the butterflies and little fairies that go up and around on the left side with a clean brush and I'm still using my little round brush I'm just going to twist and roll to mix those two colors together the white and the neon yellow warm and I'm going to come in and add some more bright highlights and little twinkles I'm going to make these uh, little stars some of them will be little twinkling stars so I'll actually be pulling and flicking out little lines to make them look like they're really sparkling and I'll be adding some stars to the sky as well and if you want you can use a little tiny liner brush you'll probably feel like you have more control with that but if you use a small round brush um, properly just really roll it to make all those bristles nice and tight and kind of make it pointy on the very tip like I'm doing right here um, you can easily get that twinkling star effect So after adding a few different sizes, tapping lightly with my finger, I'm gonna come right in by her hair here and almost begin the indication, slight indication there of some waterfalls and having her hair kind of just fall down. I want this to have a, a real fantasy feel to it. So I'm not holding back. If I have any ideas that come to me, I'm just gonna not think about it and I'm gonna go for it right away. So it's sort of intuitive. Well, this painting is very intuitive, actually. I didn't plan it ahead of time. Um, and I decided here, I love this. I've been incorporating these a lot in my fantasy paintings. I think they uh, make a painting feel really lighthearted and create that sense of freedom. And little butterflies, you don't see anything in real detail, but we, ha we know, right? We have, it's a suggestion that those are butterflies or little fairies. Um, or little angels whatever you want them to be so you can have a little bit of each so some of these will look a little bit more like they could be fairies and other ones um, definitely look like they're leaning more towards butterflies so I'll be doing these first um, just in this neon yellow warm and white and they're really kind of transparent mostly transparent some areas will have a little bit more paint to them so they look like they uh, stand out a little bit more and have a bit more of a highlight. Later on, I'm gonna be coming in and adding some color to them. Now my next color I wanna add for her dress is neon pink. So I've got neon pink, 
I watered it down. I'm gonna just go over and filter over some of the areas here that are mostly dry now. So it can be really difficult. A filter won't work if the paint underneath is wet. You're not gonna get a filter. You're just gonna make a new, you're gonna be mixing colors on your painting, which is fine if that's what you're going for, but uh, a filter means adding a color over top of one that's dry already. So here I'm gonna incorporate this pink into uh, the butterflies and little fairies and stars here and I'm, I'm just adding a little bit of color each time so I'm not um, overpowering any anything it's just adding and enhancing what's already there okay I just want to add little dabs and dots of white or neon yellow warm with white inside to make them really bright and sparkle and then I'm gonna start having some really uh, whipsicle flow and lines to the bottom of the dress. I'm just gonna um, create little ripples with my brush, almost like little figure eights. You could do that too, that makes it really easy, but I want to make really wavy lines and overlap, and I'm gonna use um, a little bit of turquoise and white, sometimes a little bit more of the pink, orange, yellow, whatever color that's in the dress. You can use any of those or all of them. I'll be using a little bit of blue towards the right that I really start to exaggerate and eventually add uh, some waterfalls in that area and um, the castle. Here I'm going to start to really exaggerate and create this twisted braided look with that phalo blue. I'm going to come in and add some stars flowing out from her dress towards this area going up where that castle is going to be and all those waterfalls. So I'll use all those colors, the pink, the orange, the yellow mixed with a little bit of white. I'm going to come in and make some of these sparkling stars like I mentioned before by pulling and flicking little lines. And I'm just going to create some swirls and highlights on those little ripples. And I don't want to cover up all of that blue. I just want to add a little bit of a highlight and a glow to it. And just adding a little bit more black to her hair and making some parts a little bit uh, thicker and wider. Really cleaning my brush out. Make sure you have no black left in your brush. You want this to be really nice and bright and clean. So starting from the center point of the star, I'm going to place a little bit of titanium white there. Barely touching the canvas. Just light little pulls and flicks from each side. You can do... Um, just a T like this or you can add an X in there after if that makes sense so a cross and then an X so you can make your stars have as many lines as you want or keep it uh, just simple and I'm gonna add a bunch of these so but I'm not gonna make every single star in the painting have all these little lines but I really do want to incorporate more because I love that magical feel it gives it so after I'm done with the white, I will come in and I'll um, enhance the colors with a filter and a little glow, soft glow with pink, maybe a bit of blue and some turquoise. So you can definitely go back in and make your stars as colorful as you want. Now, I apologize for the glare here on my canvas. I was just so lost in painting and enjoying myself so much that I didn't even notice that this was happening. So I'll have to, eventually I did notice and I, I moved, um, I had to change the filming and, and move my easel over. But that's why I've kind of really zoomed in in some areas here just to crop that out so that it's not too distracting. Um, but you can see I'm just coming in here with a little bit more, that yellow and white. 
and I'm just gonna go over here for the next few minutes and build up my star effect. I want them to be all different sizes when I make them. I don't want them to all be the same, so keep that in mind. You really, when you're doing a lot of the same thing, um, to make it more interesting and realistic, you'll change the sizes up so you'll have lots of mini ones and um, medium sized ones and some bigger ones. So after taking a few minutes to add a lot more stars, I'm going to come in and add a little bit of turquoise and blue to my brush and just kind of go around and add a bit more of a glow without using just white. I think this is way prettier and more magical to choose a color to mix with the white and then go around and create that pretty haze. And I love turquoise and phthalo blue together. I think they look really pretty. You really can't go wrong. You could also use pink and uh, magenta or purple. I end up adding a little bit more of my neon luminous rose at the end of the video and I loved that. That's my favorite thing that I think just color that just brings this painting all together but it's different. It can be different for everybody. Some of you may opt out of using um, neon colors altogether. So it's very individual and personal. I recommend you guys choosing the colors that speak to you and um, that make you feel good. So all of your favorite colors. I'm taking a combination of turquoise white with my phthalo blue now and I'm going to start these uh, little waterfalls so little tiers of waterfalls coming down cascading and then I decide why not I just started envisioning a little castle up here just a tiny one and how I normally paint is intuitively so that means I start a painting not having anything in mind of what I'm going to create and it's just very freeing like when you were a kid again and you just had some crayons and uh, a fresh piece of paper with nothing on it and we didn't know what we wanted to do we didn't decide until we started right and that's exactly how intuitive painting works you just start with a brush stroke and look where it leads you and this is what my painting ended up being like and I'm really happy with this I I uh Right after I did the waterfalls, which of course wasn't planned, I just decided why not have this little castle and I think it's inviting and this whole painting kind of tells a story and I, I don't want to say what the story is because then I might wreck it for um, viewers, you guys watching and just then, you know, maybe you've got something in mind already. So I don't want to um, kind of wreck whatever story you guys are being told by this. I like to leave it to the viewer and let the viewer decide um, what it is saying to them, if that makes sense. So I'm going to exaggerate a few more little lines here around the corner and scumble. Just working out the leftover paint from the waterfalls in that castle. Now I'm going to take a little bit more white and add some little taps and this is just with a little flat brush little lines. I don't want to do too too much detail. This is really far away and I think in this case less is more. So it looked fine just how it was. You can leave it like that or you can come in and add a few more details and highlights like I'm doing here.
Now all I'm doing is tapping with my brush. You could use a filbert brush or a tiny mop brush for this if you want. I just want to create a little bit of a cloud, hazy effect, maybe some uh, indication of foliage or trees, just kind of something to um, envelop this castle and kind of make it look like it's set it's in a setting somewhere there, not just floating in a sky. Um, and I think the just sticking with the turquoise, maybe a little bit of white or blue, uh, is all you really need here. Not not too much color. It's kind of just soft and hazy and nice as it is. So I'm gonna add a few more details to this painting. Um, just a little bit more color here and there. Maybe a few more stars. Maybe just a little bit of highlights. And then I'll be using my beautiful neon luminous rose um, for the outer areas of the butterflies and the little fairies. And maybe a little bit more down towards the bottom left of her dress. So I want you guys to um, give this painting a try. I hope that you get inspired and want to paint along with me. And I'm excited to see your versions on the Facebook group. Um, remember, you can definitely approach any one of my painting tutorials with whatever paints that you have. Just don't ever let that stop you or prevent you from painting along with me. There's lots to learn and use whatever colors that you have. So I want to wish you guys happy painting. Thanks so much for all your support on my channel and for painting along with me. Have a wonderful day, guys, and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye!